Greetings friends, I'm Mike the Fit Farmer and in this episode I'm going to do something different than I normally do. In this video I'm going to give you a tour of the garden, a full tour of our garden. But first, for those of you who are new to my channel, I am a former natural bodybuilder, not sure if you can tell or not, turned farmer. And my family and I, we sold pretty much everything we had to start a life and farm out here in the country and live in this thing right behind me called our yurt. So let's go check out the garden. Just right outside the door of our house is my wife's, Lacey's, apothecary garden. She has a number of neat things that she's growing in here. But I'm gonna let her talk about her garden in another video. So make sure you stay tuned for that. The main market garden is right out this way. Come on. As you first enter the market garden, we come into the area that I like to call the sun garden because these beds right here are the beds that we have on the farm that get the most amount of sun for a large portion of the year. And in this garden, we have some cucumbers that we're growing up, the cattle panels here. Right here, we're growing the burpless cucumbers. And we had some arugula in this bed just beside of it, but that arugula we've cropped out and I'm looking forward to putting a new crop in. And we also have beside that, which isn't doing too well right now, but they had been doing really, really well and it is lemon squash that we have bought from Baker Creek. And I really like the lemon squash. This was our first year of growing it, but it has done absolutely great. And today was our harvest day, and just this morning, Josiah harvested a bunch of cucumbers from here, as well as a bunch of lemon squash from this bed and some of the lemon squash that we have down below. But before we go down there, right here I have a raised bed that we made just this year and I am growing something I've never grown before, and it is a pepper, a Japanese pepper, called Murasaki. And let's take a look at it. And it is a neat, dark, purple, almost black pepper. And looking at it, most people think that it would be a hot pepper. But it's actually not. It's almost just like a normal bell pepper as far as flavor. Here in this garden, we're doing some leaf mulch. And that's helping just to keep some more moisture in, even though it looks really dry right now. And actually our temperatures have been really, really hot this week. It's crazy because last week we had some temperatures that there was a high of in the upper 60s and then lower 70s. And then bang, this week the temperatures have been 90 plus with the real feel in 100. So it's kind of been a little bit all over the place. How's it been at your place? Is, it, is the temperatures been hot, somewhat decent? Let me know. Also right in this bed right here, is some dahlias and I'm growing dahlias for the first time. So these look pretty neat. I really like the yellow colors on there and uh, they are edible as well. And while we're right here there's also some volunteer daikon radishes that I'm gonna go ahead and harvest and take in. Maybe we can have it for dinner or for salad or something. But uh, there we go, some nice daikon radishes. Two of them! Oh, I see a couple cucumbers that Josiah missed. It's all right, I'll go ahead and grab them, but he normally does an excellent job and they've been producing really well. So I'm just gonna go ahead and grab these. All right, we'll just put these with the radishes for now. Come back to those. Well, I'm constantly looking over things around the garden just to see how things are doing. Each time that I'm out here, I just, I just can't help it. You're, each time you come out to the garden at this time of year, you never know what's gonna be growing and what's gonna be ready to harvest. And right here in this section of the sun garden, as a part of the market garden, <laughs> we have, um, these are a number of different pepper plants. These are different from the Mirasaki that are up there. Here we have uh, just mainly like your bell pepper type peppers. And uh, one of them that we're trying to grow and growing for the first time, I know we're growing a bunch of new things that we haven't grown before all around the garden this year, is uh, I believe it's called a Purple Horizon uh, pepper. And we've gotten those seeds from Baker Creek as well. And uh, let's just take a look and see if uh, some of them are ready. Lacey said some of them might be ready. There we go. Oh yeah. 
This one right here looks like it's pretty much ready. Or close to ready. But, let's see here. That one's kind of in there, a little weird. I should grab that one first. But as you can see there, it has that rich purple, almost black color, very similar to the Mirasaki. I really like it, it's really neat. So, I actually hadn't tried these yet, so this will be my first time actually trying those, these as well. So, pretty excited about that. Well, actually, we'll actually try them later. I'll let you know how they taste. But in here, we also have some eggplant that are growing. We have the Black Beauty as well as some Japanese eggplant. And then we have some more lemon squash. But let me show you, since there's a couple of ones that are ready to be harvested right here, so I can show you what the lemon squash fruit looks like. Oh, here's one right here. This one's a tad smaller than what we normally harvest it at, but it kind of shows you and gives you the idea of what it looks like. And uh, they get the name lemon squash because I believe they look like lemons. They're about the size of lemons. So they're actually pretty good and they taste just like your normal prolific yellow squash. But uh, they're very prolific as well and we uh, actually really like them. Down there we have some more squash growing. But uh, let's go look at some other parts of the garden. All right, I'm a little bit embarrassed about showing some of these portions of our garden right now because a number of things are in transition, but hey, it's real. Right back here behind me, this morning we harvested arugula and mizuna. And if you're doing a summer salad mix, both arugula and mizuna are great greens to add to your summer salad. They actually really balance the flavor. Sometimes lettuce can slightly get a bitter flavor in the summertime with the heat and the longer day. So Adding things like arugula and mizuna really help kind of counteract that bitter flavor. As well as they add a lot of different color and to the presentation of your salad mix. So I really recommend that. Next, let's check out our tomatoes here in the caterpillar tunnel. Okay, in here we're growing a number of different varieties of tomatoes. Some we're growing as cherry tomatoes and that are just really prolific and then some we're growing more for the presentation that they add of just being different and odd because that is what one of our some of our restaurant uh, chefs had suggested that they want something that's just different different than the conventional in here we're doing the hard pruning method with the tomahooks here on a wire here and the hard pruning method really forces the tomato plant to really produce and put the energy towards producing more fruit one of the mistakes that we made in growing our tomatoes this year is we got them started really early like we're, we should and actually more on time. However, we didn't get them transplanted to the next stage before we got them out here on time. So we're a little behind and uh, we don't have them ready. They're not red yet, but you can see they're knocking at the door of being ready. And it's actually been getting too hot in here this week. So some of them are showing signs of getting too hot. So we need to make sure that we raise up the size of our caterpillar tunnel. So that way they can begin changing to red when we look forward to getting our first harvest here from some of these tomatoes. Super excited about that. But let's go see some more parts of the garden. As with any farm or any garden, the longer you're on the area and have the opportunity to work it, the more you learn about it. The more you learn about what works for you and what works best for the land. And here where we farm, it is on a slope. So I've had to terrace out the land to make it suitable for farming. And terracing is nothing new. Many Asianic cultures have done it for years. I do say that the choices or best land to farm is probably a flatter land, but terrace garden and farming can work. These countries, uh, these other cultures have terrace garden for years on mountains and hillsides. And I've learned a lot about terrace garden along the way. And uh, let me know if you'd like to hear more about that. There's a lot of things that I've learned. Like I said, it's not the choices or best probably not the best place to farm but it can be done and it can be done effectively let's check out another portion of the garden there's not a ton going on right here except for these collards that are almost done almost ready to be pulled out and collards aren't typically a market garden or micro farm crop uh, just because they're really not cost effective to grow however if you can get a premium for your collards which I feel we can uh, with a couple of our customers. It can be a crop that you can grow. We actually get $5 a pound for our collars. But if you can't get something close to that, uh, I would recommend not growing them for a small market garden. 
but also right here there's nothing going on right now but this morning this bed was packed full of radishes and we harvested them together the kids were actually helping me out harvesting the radishes this morning and we were growing mostly the scarlet globe radishes in there and uh, we got a pretty good harvest off of those and after we finished harvesting the radishes the kids took the leftovers the rejects to the chickens and the ducks and they absolutely love getting the rejects and now that this bed has been cropped out from the radishes next we're going to go ahead and turn it over really really soon as soon as possible because we really want to have a high rotation garden so that way especially when you're working on a market garden that is a small scale micro farm you want to make sure that you're turning your beds over on a regular basis so that way you're making the most money that you can from each bed so now that we've gotten a root crop out of here next what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll put a greens crop in and just beside of that bed where the radishes were we had mustard greens going growing there and we've cropped that out next we'll probably go ahead and put a root crop in after we prep these beds we'll go ahead and flame weed them bring in the broad fork to aerate it and then we'll use the rototiller to add in some compost and some amendments to get these beds going and then next week we're actually going to go ahead and completely crop out these collard greens here and on the other side of the collard greens we actually had arugula there that we cropped out this couple days ago and now Lacey went ahead and planted some radishes in those beds she actually used the wheel hoe to sow the seeds for the radishes but let's go check on the upper portion of this market garden right this way so right up here we have some cucumbers that we're growing up the fence here we're using the fence as a trellis so it's serving two purposes as a fence a barrier to keep things out of the garden as well as a trellis for the cucumbers to grow up and that makes it where we can easily harvest right off the fence and right here we're growing another new crop that we haven't grown before and this is okra it is i believe it's burgundy okra and this is another crop that another seeds that you can buy from baker creek seed i really like the color of these they're just really neat vibrant burgundy all righty and the last thing that we have up here in the upper section is it was supposed to be squash however there was a mix-up of when we were sowing our seeds in our trays because these are transplants that somehow they got rearranged before i was able to label them and you know what these are not squash it's actually watermelon so it's like oh these are actually one of the best tasting watermelons that i've ever had and i found out about this one this is the orange grow orange glow watermelon we bought these seeds from guess where baker creek again and i first had these watermelons last year at the national heirloom festival in california so what i'm going to have to do is probably just like we did the cattle panels down there for the cucumbers i'm just going to have to do the same thing here so that way they have a trellis to grow up and uh and or maybe go ahead and put some landscape fabric down there where uh, there's soil and we just that way it'll keep the weeds and unwanted plants from growing up so that way we're actually able to see the watermelon that are there and able to harvest them without the challenge of uh, being a scavenger hunt to find your, your watermelons. But uh, let's go check out one last group section of the garden. Oh, and here is one squash that actually made it over here like it was supposed to and there's one that needs to be picked. So, there we go. The one squash that made it over here like it was supposed to make it over here. <laughs> And lastly, the newest expansion or newest area of our garden is this back portion. So we basically have the main stretch of the garden is pretty much 100 feet long, but we've broken up into sections. And in the sun garden that I showed you earlier, we have nine 25 foot beds. And here in this section of the garden, we have 25 50 foot beds in this area. And right here in this back half, we have mostly greens growing with some root crops like radishes but as far as our greens we have arugula mizuna as well as lettuce we have and for our lettuces we have salanova sweet chris we also have muir lettuce that we're primarily growing right now in the summer months so that is mainly what we have growing right now and we actually harvested a bunch of that this morning
Well, that's the garden. Let me know how you like this tour of the garden. And I'd love to do some more tours of different aspects of the farm. There's other areas that we'd like to show you. So let me know what you think. Also, Lacey is planning to do a tour of her, her apothecary garden. So let us know how interested you are to see that. And I want to take this time to thank those of you who are supportive, supporters of ours. Those of you who faithfully view our videos on a regular basis and those of you who have joined our Patreon support team, as well as those of you who have donated. And for any of you who would like to donate and join our Patreon or support us in various ways, make sure you check out the show notes below. Also, in August, I plan to be at the Homesteading Life Conference in Hannibal, Missouri, talking about making money through market gardening. So make sure you come, get your tickets, and come meet us out there and learn more about making money through market gardening. That's it for today. We'll see you next time. And as always, grow on.